Next speaker is Kaidi Kao from Stanford. And uh, he will discuss about learning in balanced data sets uh, with uh, label distribution aware margin loss. Um, so, hello everyone. Good morning. And I'm Kaidi. I'm a second year math student at Stanford. Today, I'll present our recent work on learning in balanced data sets with large scale, uh, with uh, label distribution aware margin loss. And this is a joint work with Colin, Adrian, Nichols, and Teng Yu. Um, so here comes our first question. Why do we care about in-balanced data sets? I think the first reason is that large-scale data sets are often long-tailed. Um, let's take iNaturalist data set as an example here. It's a large-scale species classification task with more than 8,000 categories. And um, most, most importantly, the training distribution is long-tailed. It is worth mentioning that the y-axis here is actually log-scaled. So the training distribution is um, way more skewed. What is more is that this task with the performance on minority classes, um, the same as the performance on frequent classes, as the label distribution on the validation set is uh, uniform. So this makes it necessary to pay attention to the model's performance on the minority classes. And someone working with relatively smaller data sets might argue that one can always collect the uniform data training set so that we can avoid the imbalance issue. However, um, I think in the real world, the fact is that data for certain classes can be hard to collect. Uh, for self-driving, in, in order to handle accidents, we want the driving model to have a good performance on critical circumstances. However, um, critical situations that might cause traffic accidents do not happen commonly. And for medical imaging, it's not easy to collect data from patients with certain symptoms or diseases due to privacy issues. Um, well, if we can't avoid dealing with imbalanced data sets, the next question is, what's the issue of it? So um, I think the problem is that if you train the, like, the data with standard ERM schedule, you will see that minority classes will have worse training and test errors. As an illustration, we consider an imbalanced CIFAR-10 dataset here. Uh, we manually co construct the dataset by removing 99% of the training samples for half of the classes. And then we train our ResNet32 model using ERM and get the following result. The upper figure is the plot for training error, and the lower figure is the plot for test error. Uh, we see that both the training and test performances on the minority classes are not good. Um, in the literature, a common practice to fix the imbalanced training error issue is to use resampling. The basic idea is that if we think of the standard ERM as um, sampling over the data set by the rule that each sample should be selected with equal probability, the idea of resampling is that each category should be selected with equal probability. In that case, the minority examples will be trained more often, and thus hopefully the training imbalance issue could be fixed. If we leverage resampling schedule to train a ResNet32 model on implant C4, we could observe that uh, the training error is indeed redu reduced. And however, the test error is not reduced. It actually increased a bit, and we, we believe that this is due to overfitting. So um, our goal here is to try to improve model's performance on minority classes during test time. Uh, given data from frequent classes and minority classes, usually if we use a complex model like neural network uh, to fit, we will likely to fit the frequent classes well, but then overfit on the minority classes. So we want to fit a model that uses complex model to, for frequent classes, but less complex model for the minority, class, minority classes. So um, ideally, uh, the fitted model should look like this. So <clears throat> our key idea here is to use stronger regularization on, minor on minority examples to avoid overfitting. Um, here in our work, we consider using a margin-based data-dependent regularizer. To have a short recap here, the margin of an example xy is defined as a distance of its prediction to the decision boundary. And in multi-class setting, margin is computed by subtracting the second largest from the largest logit. 
uh, the training margin of class J is defined at the minimum margin among all the samples in that class. Uh, to simplify our problem here, we consider a binary classification problem. We denote the number of samples in each class as N1 and N2. And then the classical generalization bounds state that if we test on the same distribution as the training, the test error will be bounded by the inverse of the minimum of margin times the square root of the number of samples uh, times some proper complexity measure of the hypothesis class. And in our problem here, uh, we care about the balanced test setting. And we can actually reformulate the uh, bounds into the following form. And we want to minimize the right-hand side given the constraint that the sum of the margin is constant so that we could have a tighter bounds on the balanced arrow. This could be done by solving a constraint optimization problem analytically. And the optimal solution gives that a gamma should be proportional to the inverse of the fourth root of NI here. Uh, notice that the standard error will result in equal margin. So actually what we are trying to do here is to allocate more margin for the minor minority classes. It is actually one way of um, adding stronger regularization on minority classes. All right. So the question left is how do we enforce the optimal margin for each class during training? And the way we enforce it is to encourage a buffer from the largest to the second largest logit. And if we apply it to cross entropy loss, we get the following form. Uh, we name it by label distribution aware margin loss. Uh, here, kappa is a hyperparameter that we could tune. The high level idea is to have the maximum kappa that the model's capacity could allow us to fit it. Well, um, in addition to the proposed loss function, we also noticed that existing training strategies are not ideal yet. Uh, basically, for standard ERM, we see that minority classes will have worse training and test errors. And resampling has overfitting issues, as we just showed. Uh, we also consider reweighting here. Here, reweighting refers to um, weighting up the loss of minority classes. It has difficulties and instability in optimization, as could be observed in the figure. The green bar is the reweighting, and um, we could see that it couldn't fit the frequent class as well. So in this work, we also proposed an effective training strategy, which we name it by deferred reweighting. Uh, it's actually very simple. Basically, we apply reweighting only after a neolinear learning rate. Here in the figure, um, CBIS and CBRW means class balance uh, resampling and class balance reweighting. Uh, this notation follows a state of the art study on reweighting algorithm uh, in this CVPR 19. Uh, the dotted line is for training error and the solid line is for a uh, test error. And once again, we could verify that in the figure that reweighting has some opt optimization issue and because the training is bad, resampling has similar training performance as our DRW, but its test error is much worse than ours. Uh, we believe that deferred reweighting lets the model to avoid the drawbacks associated with reweighting until, like, until it learns a good initial representation from ERM. However, like the precise explanation for DRW's success is not fully theoretically clear yet. Uh, so finally, it comes to our experiments. We did extensive experiments on imbalanced C5. Uh, to summarize the table here, uh, basically we observe consistent improvement across different imbalanced settings. The combination of our, two, of our two techniques achieves the best performance. And to better understand the improvement of our algorithms, we show per class error of different methods. Uh, our proposed algorithm exhibits great generalization on minority classes while keeping the performance on the frequent classes almost unaffected. Uh, this suggests that we succeeded in regularizing minority classes more uh, strongly. And we also applied our algorithm on the large scale iNaturalist data set as, as well. In this table, uh, CB focal is the previous state of the art of, uh, from this CBPR19. And the last three columns use our techniques. As an ablation study, we see that 
uh, in the table, uh, either applying LDAM or DRW gives you pretty decent improvement. And by combining these two techniques, uh, our best result be like beat the previous of the art by a large margin. And finally, the paper and code are already released. And thanks for listening to our talk. Questions? Thank you. <clears throat> Informative talk, but um, I was wondering, you didn't talk about data augmentation. Um, so would data augmentation have solved the problem simpler, or have you used data augmentation to see if that's uh, helped with the minority classes? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, surely I think data augmentation can like, also help with the data augmentation problem here. Actually, I saw a submission in this iClear that like, deals with data augmentation, and I think they also got pretty like, good, imp good, good performance. Uh, but like we haven't like studied like much about it in our ex in our research yet. No more questions. So let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.